Hi, everyone. This video is designed to serve as a sort of video two in a series on the chi-square test of association uh, using IBM SPSS, where we are analyzing a two by four contingency table. So in my previous video, which I'll have linked underneath the video description, um, I ran an analysis uh, looking at the association between these two categorical variables. And you can see uh, that, uh, you know, we have essentially the raw data for these two variables. And as I said before, each row in the, in the data set represents a given case with an observation on each of those two variables. Now, it is possible to run the same analysis uh, that we ran before using only frequency data. And so I wanted to show you how you could accomplish this using SPSS. So I'm going to open up a new SPSS data file, and I'm just going to use the frequency data that we had in the contingency table. So uh, ordinarily, you wouldn't just uh, go into a contingency table uh, and, you know, if you happen to have the raw data, you could just run the analysis using that. But if you happen to have, let's say, summary data from uh, from an organization or on a website or something, you don't have the raw data, but you want to uh, study or test the relationship between two categorical variables and you happen to have frequency uh, data uh, in the form of kind of um, like you might have in a contingency table, then in that particular case, uh, you could run the analysis. So here we are under um, uh, opening up the new SPSS uh, data file. And I'm going to go under variable view right here and type in uh, the name of my first variable. We'll call it edu or ed level, excuse me, ed level. And then the second variable we'll call vote pref. Okay. And then, you know, we can assign uh, the labels that we had before. So for ed level, we'll uh, go ahead and just assign those. We'll say one uh, is equal to freshman, uh, two is equal to sophomore, then three is equal to junior, and four is equal to senior. Okay, then uh, we'll uh, do the same thing for vote pref. We'll just assign a value code of one to candidate A, and uh, two, we'll assign a label of candidate B. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to uh, create um, a variable that represents frequency count. So we're going to type in FREQ. I'm just going to, that's how I'm just going to name it. Then we'll go back under data view. So then what we'll do is we're going to assign, um, we're going to uh, basically assign, you know, for each cell that we were talking about in our contingency table, we're going to assign a value for education level, voting preference, and then we'll have the frequency count. So uh, for, uh, if you recall from the last discussion, uh, the first cell we had, essentially we had freshmen, uh, who preferred candidate A, and we had 11 in that cell. Then we had uh, freshmen preferring candidate B, and we had five in that cell. So that was the first column uh, in that contingency table that we were analyzing. Then we had sophomores that preferred candidate A. We had six of those. Sophomores preferring candidate B, uh, we had eight of those. Then we had um, we had uh, juniors that preferred candidate A. We had four of those, and then we had uh, sophomores, uh, excuse me, juniors preferring candidate B. We had, um, let's see, let me make sure I got this right, 11 right there. And then we had seniors, candidate A, we had three, and then seniors preferring candidate B, we had 12. Okay, so as you can see, we have frequency data associated with each of the cells. So we can actually carry out our analysis, but we can't do it in the same way that we did before where uh, we uh, we kind of uh, ignore our sample size. So we do need to make sure that we take that into account. I'm also going to quickly just change the uh, scale uh, of measurement here. Um, we'll just uh, set this as ordinal. That's an ordinal variable. Uh, and then voting preference, we'll set that as a uh, as a nominal. Let me see if I can find that. Yeah, there we go. Nominal. Um, all right. So to, to run our analysis, we're going to, going to go to data 
and then we're going to select weight cases. So right now, if we run our analysis, if we go through uh, and run our chi-square test, uh, it's going to treat basically uh, there's only eight rows of data, and that's obviously going to miss out on the total sample size. So uh, because this is what we would be analyzing only, we would be ignoring the frequencies for those cells. Uh, so we're going to go to data, weight cases, and we'll say weight cases by. And then we're going to move our frequency variable over to this box and click on OK. All right. So now when we go back into our data set, You'll see uh, at the very bottom of the screen, you'll see it says weight on. So that right there. So now we can actually run our analysis and um, and uh, have the uh, sample size correctly uh, taken into account. So we'll go back up to analyze descriptive statistics, go down to cross tabs right there. We'll move our ed level variable over again to our uh, column box, vote preference to the row box. We'll just click on the same things that we had clicked on before. And click on OK. And so now you can see in our output, uh, we have the same results. So these are the results. You can see the chi-square value 9.169, p-value is 0.027. Uh, Kramer's V is 0.391. All of these are the same values that we had above uh, when we ran the analysis using the raw data. So at any rate, I'm not going to go through all this again, but I just wanted to let you know that there is an alternative way of running your analysis. This could be, as I said, it can be very useful in those cases where all you have is summary data and um, and you don't have the raw data available. So that's going to wrap up this uh, short video presentation. And thanks for watching.